thing I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. For you did not choose me, Jesus said, for I chose you to bear fruit, fruit that will last. That's my heart. I want to bear fruit. I want to leave nuggets for people. I want to see God use me. And I know that's your heart. God wants to increase that fire in your spirit. He wants us to move out with that love and that compassion in a deeper level. Not to be hardened in our heart when things don't go away or struggles happen. He wants us to keep that mindset of faith. So what happens if we reject the gift? If we reject the gift, not a good thing. It would be a sad thing to reject the gift. You see, receiving the gift not only will save our souls, but gives our life purpose. There are many people who've given their hearts to Jesus and they've sh they're shifted back and they're back and forth like yo-yos. God's like, it's time to have some stability, amen? Stability. God says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And what can man give in exchange for his soul? What can man give in exchange for his soul? You see, God says that he will reward. And, and the amazing thing is, it says here, the Son of Man is coming. And this morning, as I was praying, this morning as I was praying, God spoke to me this morning, and he said, I'm coming soon. Get ready. He's coming soon, precious ones. Do you believe that? He's coming soon. And we need to be ready. My question to you is, are you ready for the harvest? Are you ready? If the wind was to blow in here right now, and thousands of souls was to blow in this door, saying, I'm hungry, would you receive? Lorna and I were praying, and she said she saw a vision of hands up in the air, crying out in hunger. Hunger. There's hungry souls in your community here, and I know you know that, but I believe that God's going to use you in a fresh way to be bold, to go out and snatch them from the fire. You see, he says that he's coming soon. In his glory with his angels. And he says he will reward each person according to what he's done. May we be the remnant to be rewarded to make that right choice. If people reject that salvation, my goodness, we'll live in misery. God doesn't want us to reject it. He wants us to grab on and hang on to it like a pit bull. The wages of sin is death, God says. And you know what? A sorrowful heart leads to repentance. But yet the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. I love what Jesus said to the centurion. But the interesting thing is, is there's some sad components to this. Um, the centurion sees Jesus. Uh, he comes out. Jesus sees the, uh, the centurion's faith. And he says to him, as he, after he says that, um, I've not seen any faith like this in Israel. And then he turns around and he says, as many have come from the east and the west, they will take their place in the feast of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But then he says, but the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness, while they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The NIV Bible says this, that describes the subjects of the kingdom as the Jews, who thought that their Judaism would be their inherited passport for the entry gate to the kingdom. But I believe it's not just for the Jews, it's for every one of us that think that the way we live our own life in Christ and our own way in itself is our way to the pearly gates. And no man can come to Jesus in and of ourselves, but through him, amen? Only through him. If we reject the gift of God, he says it will, he'll reject us. And we don't want that, that's not his will. And we know that the Bible says, you know, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But yet the gift of God, it's eternal life. He wants us to have eternal life. 
He wants us to be free from our sin. He wants us to, when we have that salvation, now it's our responsibility now to pray and to, to be bold to step out with others. So how do we receive this precious gift? Firstly, we need to acknowledge him in all of our ways. He says in, in Proverbs 3, do not lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will what? Make your path crooked? What does he say? Straight. Straight, exactly. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. And if we lean to our own understanding, we will fall in the trap of deception. Proverbs 14 says this in, in verse 12, if you're taking notes. It says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it could lead to death. But I believe that it grieves God when we try to put God in a box with our own desires. He wants us to realize that we can do nothing in and of ourselves. You see, precious ones, when we come to Him humble, and we come to Him in a transparent heart, and we say, Lord, I am surrender, and I acknowledge you that you died on the cross for my sin. He is there, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Amen? But he's faithful and just to forgive your family too as you stand in the gap and he'll use you. Amen. How we receive, we've got to believe. I call it the ABCs. A, acknowledge. B, we need to believe. We need to believe that salvation is for everyone who believes. Amen. It's for everyone. He wants every single person to step out in faith. Beyond your feelings, beyond what your eyes can see, the Holy Spirit wants to do great things. You see, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by man, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord, amen? amen. He draws you, and you can make a difference in your community, and God just wants your faith to arise. When you're seeing the difficulties in your home, he's like, just lay that all aside and just believe. Come receive me. Believe me. Everything I've made known to my father, everything my father's made known to me, he says, I have made known to you, to those who believe. Everything, precious ones, everything, every single thing is possible with God. You see, it's impossible. It's impossible to please God. We don't have faith. And that's part of believing. You've got to believe who He is. Not just to talk about Him. Not just to slightly hear a little bit about Him. But to receive Him. To believe Him. And when we believe Him, what happens? We begin to testify. We begin to confess with our mouths. And we begin to say, you know, God, I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that you rose again to set my life free, Jesus. Romans 10, 9 says, if we confess our mouth to Jesus and believe with all of our heart, not just a little, but with all of our heart, that Jesus was raised from the dead, he'll save our souls. That's what he wants. He wants to save us. I love what I, uh, in, in Psalm 32, he says this. He says, I have acknowledged my sin to you. Listen to this. I have acknowledged my sin to you, O God. Now this is David who's crying out to God. He says, I have acknowledged my sin to you. I did not cover up my iniquity. But he says, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave all my guilt and all my sin. Jesus says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. To forgive us of all of our sins. He's faithful. He's just. He sees that we're flesh. He sees that we're human beings. But precious human beings ready to move with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Ready to move to snatch souls from the fire of our community. To rise up as disciples for Him. 
Amen.